Hello and welcome to Sequel Pitch, episode 63. It is very, very good to have you here. I'm Drew Toynbee. I'm very pleased to be hosting. And with me, as always, I have the patriarch of the family, strong, tall, silent, terrifyingly violent when he wants to be, Matthew Rushton. Rawr. I have... <laughs> and and actually, frankly, I have the, the human embodiments of um, Roman and Tej. I'm not sure which is which, so I'm just going to introduce Andy and Ross together as a pair like those two in this upcoming movie. Hey, guys. How are we still alive? <laughs> We're invincible. <laughs> We're in... <laughs> oh, God. We yeah. are absolutely thrilled to be back in <laughs> universal's flagship that the crown in universal's the centerpiece jewel in universal's cinematic crown the fast and furious universe as oh, yeah. you're <laughs> almost certainly aware coming up in may we have fast 10 fast 10 your seat belts hey. for fast 10 hey. the hey. Oh, movie shit. In the series. good thing yeah and as you may remember, if you're a long time listener of the show, one of our consistently still most popular episodes was when we watched and reviewed Fast 8 and all pitched our versions of Fast 9. Mm -hmm. So we figured with 10 coming out, the best thing we could do would be to watch Fast 9 and pitch our own versions. Yeah. Is everyone excited? Oh, yeah. so excited. So excited. <laughs> so excited. It's going to be a bit of a loosey-goosey one because we may be following on from the storylines in the guys' previous pitches because they were so bonkers. We might be following on from Fast 9. Who knows? Let's yeah. discover together. Before we get into our quick review scores and our sort of more in-depth review for our Patreon subscribers, we do a little synopsis of the movie. I don't think it, this movie could take 20 minutes or it could take 20 seconds. I'm going to try and do the shorter version. So <laughs> here we go. In 1989, Dominic Toretto's dad dies in a car crash. He blames his brother and he has a race with him and he wins the race and uses that to banish his brother because they live by the rules <laughs> of the road. 30 years later, cyber terrorist Cypher, played by Charlize Theron, the baddie from the last movie, the last official movie, that is, um, has been arrested. Dom's retired. But then all of the gang show up and tell Vin Diesel that actually Mr. Nobody, Kurt Russell, the, the government guy, is he, does he work for the government? We still don't actually know. Um, was attacked by rogue agents and it was crashed in a fictional Central American country. While they're there, we discover that Tom's long lost exiled brother is a baddie and he's come along and there's basically this huge, huge storyline where Jacob, the long lost brother, is helping some other dude called Otto steal a computer thing which is locked by the DNA of a girl who is being looked after by Han Sol O oh from, from Tokyo Drift <laughs> who died but didn't actually die and now he's back and then basically, as happens with all of these films, Jacob gets double-crossed by the baddie, he becomes a goodie, and it all ends happily ever after, effectively. <laughs> yeah, good. With a, with a few, few car chases throughout in. Throughout this, this film for some yeah, reason. Yeah, there was a lot. Yeah. There was a few car races in there as well. Don't forget those. I mean, oh, the, yeah, the glue really? that holds this franchise together. I mean, oh, we'll yeah, get we'll, into them. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll get into them in the review. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, it's insane. It's just completely insane. It's just like the God's Eye. There's another computer thing which will end the world if the baddies get it and why it hasn't just been destroyed no, pff, why, who cares right anyway so let's get on to our scores and headline thoughts so um i want to hear from ross yeah <laughs> um i liked this movie mm. <laughs> and i thought it was better than the last movie Okay. I think it, it's yeah. going... I mean, there are a lot of flaws in it, but because <laughs> it's Fast and Furious, I don't really care. I don't know why. It's just mad. And it, it's ball to the wall, mad. You, it's just that popcorn movie that just keeps on getting more and more ridiculous. And you keep on going... You want to see it because you're like, I want to know what they're going to do next. I want to know yeah. what they're going to do next. Um, you know, there's some character progression in it, maybe, I think, <laughs> I'd say. Possibly. Like yeah. some, someone wrote, it, they don't someone wrote it, the like... words character progression on a piece of paper and sort of fanned <laughs> yeah. it at, yeah. at the set. 
at some point. But I'll go into detail about what bits I like and what bits I don't like. But uh, I'm going to give it... Um, oh. Oh. Oy, am I going to give it... I'm going to give it... Four. Wow. Vin Diesel clenching his fist whilst also flexing in every scene that he's in <laughs> out of five. Very good. Four beefy Vins out of five. <laughs> yeah. He is beefy. Andy, Ample. how about you? Um, I think, even though I love the franchise for what it is, and they basically just do it to go, what can we do next? Kind of like what Saw franchise became when they were like, let's just think of cool new deaths and just stick us some sort of story in between. Yeah. Um, I like, you know, I knew that going in, so I kind of like that. Same with this franchise, obviously. But I think they've been kind of slowly declining, actually, in terms of what happens in between the awesome set pieces. It was kind of like a lot of awesome set pieces in like the uh, like five and six, probably, is when it started getting good, um, in my opinion. Um, you'd have awesome set pieces, and then you'll have like fun or mini set pieces in between, and then another big set piece. And this one, I thought they were like little set pieces. And then it was just like, meh. Maybe because I'm so used to like our pictures being mental and it's not as mental as our pictures. <laughs> or because like maybe like the, it's like some sort of like mission returns with the franchise now where like, like I laughed when they went into space, but everything else in the like even magnets, I was just a bit like, eh. <laughs> which is like a huge thing. And it should be like, you should have that kind of reaction where you're like, oh shit. But like, I don't know. I was like eh, expecting more, so um, <laughs> I'm gonna give it two point five uh, Will uh, Wilhelm screams out of five. <laughs> I caught one. I don't know if you guys caught it. But... I didn't actually. Shit. Yeah. Well, Matthew, how about you? Um, I. <laughs> taking it as a franchise film uh, you know it's very much it's one of 10 films in a franchise now um <laughs> you, you either you either gonna love it or hate it by this point and kind of for what it is it's as fast and furious as you can get i personally think it's slightly better than the last outing um in that well like it could be better but it could be worse i suppose because <laughs> there are times i'm like oh character progress <laughs> Ah, oh, wait, no, glory moment. Um, but then there's <laughs> stupid mad stunts. They go, what haven't we done yet? We haven't been to space. Tick. Um, <laughs> you know, so it's, <laughs> it's madness. That whole scene, I can't wait to talk more about. Oh, yeah. But, you know, and for me, t we were talking about this off screen and Tokyo Drift, I really enjoyed. And it was great to see some of that come back to life in this film bringing Sean back, bringing Han back, um, mm. and the gang. So I was like, you know what? You, you get some bonus points there from me. Mm. Um, I'm still not completely sure if like I love it or hate it, but I'm feeling optimistic right now, so I think I love it. Um, don't know if I quite love it as much <laughs> as Ross, though, so I'm going <laughs> to give it 3.75 car rope swings. Oh, round and no. round. That's what, that's what I was going to use. Goes, oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I can't wait to get into that as well. Uh, 2.75 magnet prank song you make, flinging a fork so fast it could have ripped his lip and his teeth out with it. Yeah, that would stick his uh, fucking teeth out. That was Jesus. a good prank, though. <laughs> well, they're invincible. 3.75 out of 5. Yeah. Did you say Very Han good. and Sean? Was Sean was one of the was the one of the rocket guys then? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He's he's Drift. Drift. I didn't see Tokyo Drift. So the I, guy you've Jean not seen Tokyo film. Drift. No, no. I still think Tokyo Drift is actually the best one. That was right. considered. Sean's I always the heard worst. it's the worst. And it's yeah, my Sean's favorite. The worst yeah. I'm, I'm main main character character in it, that guy is more. He, he is a bit of a lame main character. He's, he's um, more the whole than thing of racial <laughs> segregation is kind of. I was like, about uh, to say that. Um, he's literally, he literally like his ratio of forehead to face is like the other. It's like sixty forty. <laughs> oh, 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 Andy, you, Andy, Andy bases how much he likes an actor <laughs> or a character based on their physical appearance. Well, there we go. I don't get through very much. I don't. But your forehead is that big. You got you got acknowledge it. It was when, like you know back in the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. It was not that substantial, and they're like, "Wow, he's aged quite yeah. a lot." Since oh, maybe then. it's his hair that's receded, so it's not yeah, like yeah. a big forehead. Yeah, his his skull hasn't grown. 
Um, Drew, we're all laughing think? now. We're going to find out it's a yeah. medical issue or something. Nice yeah. landing. Well, it's just receding hairline. But there yeah, we go. Yeah, that, that is the medical issue. Yeah, and and we're sponsored by Hims. No, we're not. Um, that's a <laughs> not shame. <anymore. laughs> yeah. Um, for me, it's. Uh, I feel so similarly to the last one, although actually maybe slightly less charitably because I feel like all this movie brings to any of the characters or the franchise as a whole is. Dom has a long lost brother and it's John Cena. The end of this mm. movie, all that is different in the universe for these characters is mm. there's another there's another goodie on the team. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That is well, they've lost, completely they've lost the it. rock now, so they do have to uh they do have to get another muscle guy in. I mean so. they could have yeah. uh, uh, they could kill kill off three him. of the main team yeah. and it would still be over stuff. It's um, so big. the the action's good. I re I I really did like the I I really did enjoy. I think liked is too strong of a word, but I did appreciate <laughs> the the bonkers chase through Edinburgh with like freaking zip lines and pile driving, getting pile drive through the brickwork <laughs> above a doorway, mm. like and punching a wall, punching a wall, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, lots yeah. of wall punching. Um. But but just the fact that there's no debate. It's like before. It's like oh, Dom has a child, and and he's gonna have to grow and become a responsible parent, and and that's something. This is literally just oh, his long lost brother, who's literally never been mentioned, is here. He's a baddie. Oh, is he the baddie who's gonna become a goodie by the end of the movie? Yes, he is. There we go. End. Um. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with. 2.75 uh pile drivers through brick walls out of five yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice which brings it in it is higher than fast eight it brings it in at 3.25 out of five yeah well done yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 absolutely yeah. high score yeah. Yeah. we've yeah. progressed we've moved forward in the timeline <laughs> and forward in the quality <laughs> So we are going to continue our chat and get really in depth with the higgledy piggledy niggledy bits of all of this movie for our good pitch pals over on Patreon. For the rest of you, it's time to get these sequels pitched. Lovely review chat there. And now it's time to get our insanity engines turned up to full blast. What was that? <laughs> Yeah, fine. I'm going with it. I'm going with it. Yeah. Um, so the rules of the pitch, as always, very, very simple. If you're a first time listener, the guys are going to have a go one at a time telling me their pitch for Fast 10. They can describe it in a lot of detail, in not much detail, however much they want. I may have some questions for them at the time. I might not. We'll see how I'm feeling. Once all three of them have done that, we'll give you a brief recap of what happens in each, th in each one. And then we get to the real meat of the matter where they argue and battle it out to convince me why I should pick theirs or why I shouldn't pick the others. So I'm saving Ross for last. I'm just saying this now, given yeah. his yeah. form for utter insanity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go... I'm going to start with Andy. Oh, OK. okay. <laughs> so, Andy, what's your title for Fast 10? Uh, right, so my, I obviously had a lot of ideas for this uh, movie. Um, I'll tell you, this, I'll tell you this, the titles for the the uh, for the pictures I didn't go with. Um, the first one is called Fast Forward, where the movie is played on one point five <laughs> speed, so it's just quicker. Everything's everything's better. Like everyone um, listening to this podcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the second one was the bad guy. Bad guy was going to be a reanimated Hitler. Uh, it was going to be called uh, Fast and Fuhrer. Um, oh, oh my god. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and then my third choice was the the fast gang meets uh, RuPaul, and instead of a, a street race, they have a drag race, and it's called the Fast and the Fabulous. Um, but nice. the serious title I'm going to go with is Fast Ten: Rise of Cthulhu. Jesus oh Christ! My God! <laughs> and, my, oh no. and my little blurb is. A cult is about to rise Cthulhu to take over the world, and apparently only Dom and his gang can save the day. Fucking hell. 
and, and this apparently is a only Donald Trump. Apparently, that's, be, that's, that's on the poster. Apparently, yeah. it's, it's only this guy. There's me like, oh, I'll do the two safe bets first, and then we'll go mental. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, go for it, Andy. Let's go. All right, so we open on an awesome street race at night. The cars are neck and neck until one car uses their NOS and overtakes winning the race. The winner gets out to the real. It's a 17-year-old Brian. Um, he gloats about winning. He's a proper dick. And he offers a race to another challenger when we hear in a deep voice, how about me? And Dom steps out of the ground uh, of the crowd. Uh, and also it's supposed to be a little bit like um, uh, the flashbacks in Fast 9, a little bit uh, uh, resembling that. When you say Brian, do you mean the kid, his yeah. kid? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Little, yeah. Little Brian. Okay, cool. Little Brian's 17 uh, now. I thought you meant we'd flash back in time. Okay, right. <laughs> no, no, no. This is, this, is, this is little Brian. He's 17 years old, but no one okay, else cool. looks that old everyone keeps their same age because <laughs> it's, it's this universe everyone looks beautiful so uh yeah dom comes out of the crowd and he says um if uh, brian wins um he'll obviously get his car does this car actually have a name the black uh the the was it the dodge i think it's a dodge or something yeah, isn't it? Charger, dodge the charger charger yeah does it have a name or is it not if not i'll just call it dom's car uh, but i wanted to give it respect you know I'd call it um the, the charger the charger okay so if dom tells uh, dom says if brian wins he will get the charger but if Dom wins, then Brian has to come home and clean his room. So the cloud kind of, the crowd's kind of, they start laugh. Brian gets embarrassed and stuff and is go goated into uh, a race. The, uh, the race is on, neck and neck. And Brian is a good racer, but he's nothing compared to Dom, who over easily overtakes and wins. Uh, and then later when they get home, Brian's complaining to uh, Dom and Letty. They, he says like, oh, they don't, you don't take me seriously and give me respect. And then Dominetti told Brian he's not ready to race yet as he doesn't understand the love and psychology behind street racing. Brian says he's going to a party with his friends and storms out. So Dom and Leslie decide to invite their friends, uh, friends around for another barbecue. I swear they had like three barbecues in Fast 9. <laughs> At the party, Brian starts complaining about his parents and his life and his friends tell him there's a way he can teach his parents a lesson and tell, uh, tells him about a meeting that's going on uh, tonight hosted by someone who wants to change things. And Brian agrees to leave and go to the party. At the barbecue, everyone is surprised when Mr. Nobody just turns up. And he's just like, yep. Anyway, no time to explain. I need you to infiltrate a gang <laughs> and gather intelligence on a rising problem with an unknown like organization. Next scene, Brian and his friends enter like an abandoned building or something where the cult, a cult meeting is taking place. The leader enters and is played by Al Pacino. Uh, and he talks <laughs> about how soon the Dark Lord Cthulhu will rise up. I can't do his, uh, his voice. But will rise up and destroy everyone but those who pledge their soul to him. <laughs> Outside that building, Dom and the gang then like they rock up and stuff. They get out, they gear up, they you know they get their guns. No bulletproof rests the pussies. They just take their guns and they stealth their way into the building. But Roman fucks up and the cult is alerted uh, and they bring out their guns and everyone starts shooting. Brian and his friends manage to run to safety, but just before leaving the building, he Brian turns to see the leader. Uh, he's got a ring on and basically forms this giant fireball and shoots it. And then Brian and his, uh, his friends like kind of take him away. The fireball starts to set a light to the building. Dom then tackles the leader and restrains him, and they drive away back to Mr. Nobody's headquarters. Back at Brian's house, he's all fucking giddy about the leader. He was all into his words and stuff, and he was like, he just fucking saw, I just saw, saw a fucking fireball. You know, he pledges himself to the cult leader. He then leaves a note for his parents saying he's running away and he's never returning. At the uh, Mr. Nobody's HQ, or government hideout, Mr. Nobody and the gang are trying to get answers from the leader, but all the leader says is like, the day of reckoning has come in. He has four pieces of Cthulhu's heart, and when the chosen one is chosen, the world will be covered in darkness as the ruler reigns over them. Suddenly, the wall explodes and some cult members break in to try and get the leader out, and another gunfight ensues. Dom grabs one of the members, like takes off his hood, and reveals it's Brian! Oh, shit! Brian says that the leader knows the truth and is more of a father than Dom ever was, which, you know, Dom takes personally. The leader rejoices and say the chosen one has just been chosen and puts the heart of Cthulhu, he puts the four pieces of the heart together and sticks it in Brian's chest. It's a big old blast and destroys the building. The leader and some members like, kind of get up and Brian's on the floor kind of convulsing a little bit, but the, uh, they, they pick him up and get in a car and drive away. Dom and the gang see this, get up and chase him. There's a massive car chase uh, with some gunfight and shit like that, you know. Dom in, his, uh, in the charger, just missing blasts and shit like that. It's really awesome. He drives up to Brian and tries to talk him round, like through the window. He like kind of winds his window down. Maybe a bit of comedy there, the slow window. <laughs> Brian, but before he can like really go into it, Brian hits him with like a mega blast, and there's like nine explosions from twenty-seven different camera angles. And the leader <laughs> and the, the leader and the cult leave because they, they they think Dom's dead. Uh, and the leader says, 
Uh, we have to get to the source of the Hellmouth to release Cthulhu. Next scene, the gang is in hospital. Everyone's waiting to see if Dom survived this massive explosion. The doctor comes out and tells that, unfortunately, Dom is no more. The Scooby gang, which I've decided to call them, they haven't got individual uh, goals in this movie, so they're just, a, they're just one unit. I'm going to call them Scooby, a Scooby gang. They break down. Roman hits a vending machine out of anger, but then cries harder at his hurt hand. Then Mr. Nobody comes and tells the gang that Tom, uh, Dom Toretto is dead. On paper. He then tells them to follow him, and he leads the gang through the hospital and to a garage. He tells the gang he and scientists have been working on Dom, and they've managed to bring him back. The gang rush into the garage, expecting to see Dom, but instead, all they see is the Dodge Charger. Unless he turns around and says, Where's oh, Dom? My God. And oh, then no. the hood of the Fucking car nice lifts later. slightly, and we hear, Hey guys, it's me. And everyone starts to freak out, and Miss Nobody says, He should have said mechanics, not scientists. But yes, they've managed to fuse Dom and his car together. Uh, Dom will be alive as long as he has fuel in the tank. Roman freaks out and hits something with his other hand and then asks if the government has put Dom's brain in the car. And Mr. Nobody says, don't be stupid. We've put his heart where the engine should be. That is what's running the car. <laughs> so Mr. Tell Mr. Nobody then tells the gang he hasn't been entirely truthful. Uh, the government actually knows a lot about this cult and Cthulhu. Um, and uh, what he's really after is the leader's ring, magic ring. Because he was like, just imagine what that could do to the world. And then the gang are just like, yeah, but you'll probably use it as a weapon. And then they have a big fight. But then Mr. But Nobody says, it's fine. We're all on the same team. I know where the source of the Hellmouth is. We can all head off to Act 3. So at the Hellmouth, the leader tells Brian Cthulhu chose him to hold his heart. And he is the chosen one to set him free. So the cult, the cult starts chanting as the leader reads from like a magic spell book. And the ground starts to shake and split open. And we see the energy of Cthulhu rise out of the hole and into some of the cult members. And this basically just makes them a bit stronger and tougher to kill for the upcoming fight. The Gooby, Scooby gang arrive, uh, drive in, and Letty's driving in Dom, of course. She, uh, she tries to talk to her son, but Brian says uh, he always knew he was special and the leader finally sees it. Car Dom then tries to explain that the leader isn't family. They are his family. Brian is obviously a bit freaked that his dad is a car, but Letty gives him a quick recap and then he's like, okay, I'm cool. But he says he's not coming home as he, uh, and blasts the gang away with a massive energy blast. There's a massive fight then between all the gang and the uh, jacked up uh, cult members. As Cthulhu starts to climb out of the Hellmouth and then starts just crushing everyone. He doesn't care about the cult, just starts crushing indiscriminately. Everyone gets in their car and tries to drive away. Brian sees all this chaos and kind of like says, oh no, I fucked up. Realizes he's been a bit of a dick. Turns on the leader. The leader tries to kill him, but then he kills the leader. Letty asks Brian is there, if there's any way to stop Cthulhu. And Brian looks to the spell book. So Letty radios uh, to the others to get Cthulhu, drives their cars uh, near the Hellmouth so Cthulhu is near it. Uh, and they use the spell book to clear it, uh, to close it. Cardom says, no, it's too dangerous for everyone. Uh, he, he has to be the one to draw out Cthulhu. Uh, before he can take off, Letty gets in and says, he yeah, has that like, oh, you're not doing this alone speech. They drive towards Cthulhu, get his attention, have a mad race to the closing hell's mouth, just avoiding like Cthulhu's stomping feet. And at the last second, Cardon tells, tells Letty to look after Brian. And he flings his car doors open and ejects Letty. He then drives up a convenient ramp, leading to another one, leading to another <laughs> ramp, to a loop that flies, uh, flies Cardom into the air and at Cthulhu. He hits Cthulhu and they both fall in the Hellmouth and the Hellmouth closes. Everyone starts to freak out as they think Dom is gone, but Mr. Nobody says, uh, has the ring now. And he's just like, you know what, Lessie? Use this to bring back Dom. Use the magic in the ring. Lessie closes her eyes tight and she taps her heels together three times and the ring lights up and explodes. Uh, everyone looks around, but there's no Dom. Ah, oh, defeated, they start to walk away until a bright light stops them. And then we end, we finally end, uh, with everyone on the beach having another fucking barbecue. The characters sit on a lun uh, sun lounger, uh, and at the end of the row, we see the family back together, Brian, Letty, and Car Dom. Uh, and then maybe we have a line about how there wasn't enough magic to bring back Dom completely, so now he's a car. I love, I love that. He's still a car. Still He's a, car. a car. I've got two post credit scenes. One, um, oh my gosh. Tom, uh, Dom and the team are paired with some robots who, who turn into cars. I don't know if we can afford that license yet. Uh, to not only save the world, but the universe. Uh, and my other post credit scene, I've just got something with a predator. <laughs> that'd be what, cool. The predators in like... Yeah, the predator. Wrong, wrong studio. Uh, wrong studio. As, as is Transformers. That Transformers <laughs> is Paramount. Oh, okay. Something, something and... with a predator-like creature. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> what I mean, hey, Universal Universal owns, owns the Jurassic franchise. Yeah. And that's apparently go. got fuck all to do. Um 
I've got I I have I have just one question. Um why ha, what what made you decide to actually just be like no there's Cthulhu and magic now? So what I wanted at the heart of the story <laughs> was uh, a family in ruin. I wanted them to be split apart. I wanted it to focus to be on this family reconnecting. You know, they've all got their different personalities. They really stand apart as uh, individuals. Uh, I think I want all. I want the audience to relate to each one of them. Um, and then I thought Cthulhu would be pretty cool. All <laughs> right, Matthew, you sir are up. <laughs> Damn, how the hell am I following that? Um, okay, so the title of my film is uh, uh, Ten. Us spelling furious with oh, the, that's good. Uh, the I and the O, the number 10. That's good. How again? How do they not think of that? I don't know. Well, they could call me up, but then <laughs> there's a colon naturally. I like a colon in my titles Fast to Anger. And this oh, is all about well, what happens yeah. when your family is wronged and you get angry. That's kind of what I'll just, I'll just <laughs> no. leave it as a real teaser. That one, okay, whenever you're ready. All right, so we open with a street race. Dom, Maya, and Jacob all behind the wheels, and they're getting competitive, but they're showing that they're family. It ends with Maya winning after the boys are flexing their muscles, and they end up kind of bumping into each other and slowing each other down. It ends, Jacob and Dom get out of the car, they're getting in each other's faces a bit, uh, and they end up getting split up by the crew. But then Jacob, easy, as he finally breaks the ice by shrugging it off, opens his car, gets out a Corona from his in-car refrigerator for a bit of branding, and chucks one to Dom, and they cheers together. So when we do some clever beard cheersing cut to be then at Dom's house, the party's all reclining. They see a news report of Otto's funeral and the family's reactions. We get a first glimpse of Otto's father, Eric, played by Stellan Skarsgård. I thought that'd be a nice uh, Cupid Nordic. He's ignoring the paparazzi, until someone in the crowd, one of the paparazzi in the crowd, shouts, Are you just going to ignore your son's death? Eric looks to the crowd in the camera and says that his son may have had many flaws, but he was his son, and no one messes with family. Somber silence in the room. Maya heads out wanting to call Brian and check on her family. I'll stop doing it now, it's getting boring. <laughs> but we hear an explosion off screen. They all run out in slow-mo dread and horror on their faces. My car is ablaze on the drive. We fade to titles. Then we have another funeral. It's a very sad affair. Lots of mourning. But Dom and Jacob have got other ideas. Vengeance. They've already decided it's Oak's doing and they do research and dirt digging escapades. Eventually they find ties to both Cypher and they also discover that he has Mr. Nobody locked down. He's alive and he's being kept on Eric's secret base. So then we cut on over to Scandinavia and we see Eric torturing Mr. Nobody to find out what happened with that data upload to the satellite feed that we saw on Fast 9 before its explosion. Basically, there's kind of exposition that Mr. Nobody managed to hijack that data before it got into the wrong hands somehow because it's Mr. Nobody. Um, yeah, we learned that there was enough data transferred so you could still seize control of these machines and world military with the right side technology. And something... Eric wants to use to finally exterminate those exterminate exterminate those drivers and anyone else associated with them. From the shadows walks in Cipher and notes how Maya should have really been more careful while using a phone when driving. It's very sick. It's quite sadistic. It tells Mister Nobody that Maya's dead and it makes it clear that they were involved with the uh, with the bombing. So in amongst this torturing, we're going to cut between Han Han L and Sean who are on comms with Dom and Co, and they have located a subsidiary of Eric's syndicate in Japan. So the problem is there's kind of Yakuza links, and there's a bit like, oh, shit, what are we going to do there, Yakuza? And Sean says he knows a guy. So then we cue, cut to meeting TK, and he's reprised <laughs> by Brian T. <laughs> Fucking get another one back. <laughs> so it turns out that they've got some really cool mutual respect and that TK knew about Han's death and like cover up so he's in on it as well <laughs> and they're all mates and then they agree that they're going to use some muscle to shut down this syndicate so we jump to that scene and we cut back to the torturing then we come back to this scene and there's like shadow gunfire and silence shots and then there's a big explosion gunfire then there's a car chase and a laptop gets seized 
and then eventually they get away from the syndicate and they beat them up or something. Uh, so Han is then sending the data to Dom and that lot. We cut over to Cypher in the torture cell, who takes a call. We don't hear the other side, mm. but she seems to give to give a green light to an order. We then cut back to Tokyo and the warehouse. They're in a warehouse where Han and those guys are, and their warehouse blows up. Dude. <laughs> Data transfer to Dom cuts before the end and the comms goes dead as well. Dom's in horror, but then suddenly he gets a data ping just as he's trying to kind of calm down. Uh, there's a data ping and it turns out it's a geographical location. Specifically, it's for an embedded encrypted server and it's in the Pentagon in Washington. So now we need some more cool people. Bring back Hobbs and Shaw who agreed to work together once again to get this server for them because they can use some government contacts. Uh, and it appears that this server is a bed of information on Eric's misdoings and dodgy ties, as well as his secret base uh, and his ties to international governments. So, Act 2 is Hobson Shaw doing their thing, breaking into the Pentagon. More torture and an exposition of Mr. Nobody to discover where the siphon data is. The mention of getting the, uh, a mention of getting the suitcase if needs be, we don't know what that means. And uh, there's more cars as Dom and Co. They head to Japan to discover what happened. They're chased by the Yakuza for a bit. Uh, the Yakuza blames them for what happened to TK, but we learn that he survived. So they use the word family lots to convince the Yakuza to let them pass. <laughs> TK goes, uh, they meet up with TK. Uh, he explains he doesn't know what happens to the others, uh, but there's a syndicate operates from this port. So Dom and Co head there and they're ambushed by Cypher and a bunch of the tech up goons. They've got some new weapons from Eric and cool, like maybe ice shooting weapons because of Scandinavia. Uh, and there's cool cars and there's weapons. Uh, and there's a massive car like thing in the port. What have I written here? Yeah. Oh, so there's a massive car chase thing. I don't know why I put thing. There's a massive car chase around the port. There, there's cool car stunts using cranes and using like the shipping containers and jumping and they're on a shipping barge as well and they're all using because they're 10 second drifting cars they can pull off cool kind of like donuts and skids and stuff um and it's all really cool and crucial and cool uh but cool. then eventually things start looking bad for the gang because a truck pulls up with like a hollow grid blockade some a bit laser gritty um and they're like shit what we're we gonna do and then suddenly because it looks really cool Something crashes through that blockade um, from the other side where it's unprotected. And, of course, it's a car with Han and Sean and Al. And they're all alive, <laughs> obviously. Hey, they all escape. Cypher's yeah. pissed. It's time to move on. Uh, Hobson Shaw secure the server after brute strength and some clever escaping. And big muscle cars escaping tanks and more cool cars. They report to Dom that Eric's secret lair is in the fjords. Uh, they all agree to meet in Scandinavia. There's comments and quips about going back to the cold and they hope there's not a submarine. Da, da, da. Act 3 is in the Scandinavian scurry. There's ice cars, there's underground caves, there's other things. Mr. Nobody gains confidence after hearing that, that the team are coming to save him and the oncoming onslaught, but Eric informs him it's misplaced. He cues something on his earpiece and suddenly the whole room shakes. Looking at what appeared to be a wall on the... We see that it's actually a window... And they were underground, and now they're not underground because the room <laughs> appears to have taken off. And I've picked a smaller version of the Avengers Halley Carrier, but one that doesn't look like it, but doesn't look a little bit like it. Um, and basically, it's a mini base, and it's now in the air. And Tom and the rest of the guys, they aren't ready for this. And it's firing missiles at them, and they have to dodge the missiles on the ice and do loads of cool ice stunts, but they've all got ice grip tires this time. So they've got the big <laughs> football boot studs in their tires, so they're better equipped for it this time. Um, he gets carried away trying to shoot the missiles at them, and they end up driving up onto a cliff, and four of the cars drive off and land onto the base. So that's Dom, Jacob, Letty, and Han. They all manage to get their cars on there. They land on the carrier, and they use their cars to break through some defences, and then they get out, and they're on foot, and they break through, finally get to Mr. Nobody's cell, only to find him at gunpoint by Eric. In a moment of anger during the heated conversation, Eric takes the gun away from Mr. Nobody's head and goes to shoot Dom. But Han takes the bullet from Dom and Jacob and uh, Dom attack Eric and Letty says Mr. Nobody intends to Han in the gunshot. The brothers beat Eric with rage, 
but then Jacob has a flashback of his brother's rage killing of the driver with the wrench and in the ninth film and he stops him before he kills him they decide to take him in instead for questioning to find out what he's done because nobody reveals that he gave them the data for Ares the information about Ares after they gave him a truth serum so now Mr. Yeah that's kind of explained through exposition and so they need to keep him and they decide they're going to take him with them so as they're about to escape, however, there's a gunshot and we see Eric dead. He's shot between the eyes and Cypher's standing there in the doorway with a smirk and a gun pointing at him. She slams the door on them all and locks it. She's seen through the window holding a data pad, which appears to be the Ares codes on one hand and a trigger in the other. She pulls the trigger, runs off, and the trigger kind of makes the carrier rattle. Uh, basically, she, she escapes on one of her cool drone planes uh, the carrier starts plummeting towards the ocean and the ice. There's a wild escape where the other cars on the ice have to drive and punch through the to Harry and save them all. And they're <laughs> racing against time and stuff. And who knows? We'll let some. We'll let the stunt coordinators work out the specifics of that. Um, all managed to escape. Unit. The second unit can handle that. That's yeah, fine. that's yeah. not mine. I know what the vision is. They've got to bring it to life. Um, <laughs> They all manage to escape, except for Mr. Nobody, who sacrifices himself for the injured hand. He kind of shoves him over, and he do, as he does so, we see him put a key into his pocket, and then he falls back into the back of the room, and the, he goes down with the Halle Carrier, the end of Kurt Russell's Mr. Nobody. Mm. Um, wow. Yeah, we see the film kind of then takes a bit of exposition, jumps over. We see Eric being dumped at a hospital with copies of all his dodgy doings scattered for everyone to find. Who now realise they need to take down Cypher once and for all in one final movie? Okay, I I don't think I've got any any questions, any Cthulhu sized questions for you. <laughs> um, so thank you, Matt. We will move on thank to you. our third and final picture, Ross Harmston. Hello, my title is called The Fast and Family Ten. Colon family. <laughs> <laughs> with, okay. Cypher, with Cypher still out there, she enlists the help of some old foes to take out the Toretto's once and for all. But it's all a distraction for a bigger plan. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. open the movie and we see Dom floating in space. We see the <laughs> shadow of an alien spacecraft. Then all of a sudden, a huge beam of light engulfs him and pulls him towards a ship. Then, all of a sudden, Dom wakes up. He looks at his arms, and they're normal. He turns to Letty, who wakes up beside him, and asks him, and she asks him, what's wrong? He says, must have been a bad dream. Uh, cut to the party that day, where Nine wow. left off. The blue sports car turns into the drive, and gets, and who gets out? It's John Cena. He's a good guy now. He talks about his new job, and the fact he had to change his name. They all toast to the family and drink Coronas and, like, very be-manly stuff. <laughs> Meanwhile, we cut to a lovely suburban house and we see Brian O'Connor. Yes, I'm bringing him back, baby. Ooh. He gets a text from Mia. It's a picture of the barbecue. It reads, wish you were here. He smiles. Then all of a sudden, a man bursts into the house and we have a huge fight. But Brian O'Connor ends up dying. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the man <laughs> takes his masks off to reveal Brixton. Oh, shit, it's Idris Elba. Yeah, oh. that's right. I think that's his name, Brixton, yeah? yeah? Yeah. He's back, but he's much bigger than before, and we hear, like, sort of, like, the whirring of maybe machine parts inside him. He gets the phone, and he says, it's done. Um, and then we have, and then he'll cut. To the, uh, and then we have a scene of Dominic lining up to a street race. But sitting next to him in the passenger seat is little B. He's sitting in uh, like a booster seat with a steering wheel. He looks at little Brian and says, You ready? Uh, little B nods and they race. Anyway, it gets near to the end of the race and Dom is looking like he's going to lose. Little B says, Dad, we got a NOS. Dom replies, Not yet. <laughs> Eventually, he tells Little B to hit the noz, and they get jolt forward. Dom says, I'll give you the wheel. Trust your instincts. <laughs> and then Little Dom finishes the race, but not before running someone over in the process. <laughs> they laugh. 
<laughs> After the race, Dom gets a phone call from me and she says that Brian is dead and to come home, his body is there and they are all sad. Uh, we then cut to an arena backstage somewhere and we see uh, we see John Cena. Uh, it looks like he's getting ready for something and he walks past a wrestler, Triple H, <laughs> and he says, good luck. We then hear the WWE theme music of John Cena, and then he runs out <laughs> on the main stage of the arena. We then get a mixture of actual WWE television filming with the actual film as well. John Cena is now a wrestler called John Cena. <laughs> and That's he's doing... That's amazing. <laughs> and then he's he's now and he's doing a promo. Then all of a sudden abseiling down from the rafters like HBK <laughs> is Brixton. Oh, shit! He tries to kill John Cena but fails. The commentators think it's a work and they can have some hilarious commentary in there as well. Fight goes backstage and <laughs> we see a load of wrestlers get killed in the crossfire, maybe like Baron Corbin or something. John Cena manages to escape, however. We then get a scene of Brixton meeting Cypher, saying he failed. Cypher says... <laughs> Or you could do this on the phone. Uh, he says the next target. Um, Cipher says the next target is Hobbs. Oh shit! And while it's, oh. and while the family is distracted, distracted, they will capture Tedge, and they will help get him to build a machine that will put an end to the family forever. Brixton says, "On my own," and then Cipher responds, "No, we have our own family." And then in walks Arturo Braga and Carter Verone from the other fucking movies <laughs> who are still alive. <laughs> they're in prison. They've been broken out of prison. Oh, shit. The forgettable bad guys. <laughs> Back at the garage, everyone is sad. And then in walks John Cena. He tells them of uh, what happened in Brixton. Of Brixton. Uh, and then Shaw comes in and he's like, I know him. Um, and they all think he's working for Cypher, but um, they think he's going to take out Dom's family, so the next target is The Rock. I don't know, they figure it out somehow. Um, Tedge says he needs to stay here and work on something. He then looks at Brian's body, so he stays. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no! So the gang travel to Maui, meet up with The Rock, and maybe Dom has a macho man off with, the, with Hobbs. Anyway, all of a sudden, Bragas and Verona's men turn up and cause a massive fight. Uh, guys, an insert 20 men minute mental car chase scene in which cars are flipping, people are dying, but not the family gang. Oh no. There's a scene of Shaw fighting Brixton on top of a van filled with chickens. And then uh, Shaw manages to knock him off the van with a chicken and says, The bigger the chicken, the harder the fowl. <laughs> And then he looks at the camera. Another <laughs> bit in which uh, another bit in which the rock is being chased on his car, but um, so the the rock is being chased as well from behind. Uh, but he puts his arm out, grabs a tree, and then it swings him around. <laughs> and then he's in front of the he's behind the guy, and then he jumps over onto the car and then squashes the man's head with his bicep. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Tedge is working on something <laughs> under this huge sheet. <laughs> it looks as if he's attaching the magnets from the last movie to something. Oh. Then all of a sudden, in burst, Braga's men and his goons, and they capture Tedge, not before he activates something under the sheet. We <laughs> see a timer count down. Cut back to Maui, and the guys are heading towards the beach. And everyone is like, oh, they can't get anywhere. They're going to the beach. Oh, no, baby, because the cars turn into aquatic cars. <laughs> and, uh, and Brixton pulls up on the beach and is, like, really annoyed. The gang get a note that Tedge has been captured, um, so they rush back to the garage, and because this is a fast franchise, they get there in, like, two minutes. They get back to the garage, and they find out what Tedge has been working on. As they're about to lift the sheet, the timer ends, and there's this huge mechanical shifting and whirring, and the sheet lifts, and we see a huge robot. It says, whoa, what happened to me? Dom looks at it and recognizes the voice. It's Brian. He's a fucking robot. 
what? <laughs> they're, all, they're all amazed. Now they need to get. Now they need to locate che- Tej. Mm. They use Robot Brian to see what happened. Uh. They learn and learn that Cipher Bragas and Varone took Tej to their hideout. Let's say on an island with a volcano or something. So they suit up and head out in these specially designed cars for each other. Um, Q, uh, a cut to the bad guys forcing Tej to make a new, some sort of new device. He does. Maybe they doctor some footage of them having the rest of the family captured and threatened to kill him. So like it's like a Photoshop job. They're like, look, we've got Dom here. We're going to kill him if you don't. <laughs> um, anyway, the family all use their boat cars to drive up onto the beach, and then they're there's this massive battle and it's a mixture of soldiers mercenaries cars planes <laughs> helicopters but they're definitely outmatched and then robot brian turns to dom and says family and then <laughs> <laughs> he then activates the magnet buttons which joins all of the cars together to create a mega brian <laughs> robot <laughs> which has all the family inside he smashes through the army but dom still needs to rescue tej so he disconnects uh the arm or something and starts driving up the volcano base meanwhile brixton tries to stop him only to be killed at the last minute by hobbs and shaw the rest of the family infiltrate the base kill people blow sharp and get tej but it's too late cypher has completed her device she does a bad guy speech and says, if I can't kill you in this world, I'll find one in which I can. <laughs> she then shoots Tej, and whilst they're helping, she activates the device, which creates a portal, and she dives through. <laughs> also, a side note, Bragas and Verone get killed as well at some point. <laughs> they all go home. Tej is fine. They have another family meal uh, and co- and a corona. Then, all of a sudden, some crackling and lightning appears. There's a huge blinding light. And after their eyes adjust, they see another Dom standing there. And this one has metal arms. He says, it's time we got the rest of the family involved. Post-credit scene. Dom is floating in space. A beam of light from, the air, from this craft picks him up. He opens his eyes, and he's in this big metallic council chamber. He looks up, and he sees five men all staring down at him. He notices they're all, like, the same, but with different variations. They speak. We are the Council of Doms. (laughs) We need your help to bring balance to the multiverse. You saved your world, but others need your help. Uh, Cut to black. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. Oh dear lord. <laughs> okay, okay, very good. No questions there either. <laughs> it's I'm pretty impressed. Like all three, like whether or not they're completely insane, like they've all got through lines. <laughs> I'm, I'm, and they all kind of. Anyway, no, I'll, I'll save that for my <laughs> summing up. Right, so <laughs> listeners, just to just to recap, we had Fast and Fur- from Andy, the Fast and Furious gang battle Cthulhu. From Matt, we had the Fast and Furious gang <clears throat> globe trot around to sort out the data that was stolen at the end of the last movie. And from Ross, we have dream sequence. Oh, no, it's a kind of normal Fast and Furious. Oh, there's a robot, Brian. Oh, it's a multiverse. <laughs> I look forward to hearing you all tell me why yours is better than the others. Please go ahead. I mean, Matt had to tell you how cool his was. He was like, yeah, it's going to be really cool, and there's this cool <laughs> thing, and it's cool, and this really cool bit, yeah? I'm just using <laughs> adjectives so that you get a better vision of it. So I don't want to be like, it's just yeah. a car chase. Yeah, you were just you said, it was cooler was... by me telling you that. I don't see that as a problem. I mean, I do. Andy's commendable to go balls to the wall, but mixing D and D with Fast and Furious, I don't think is the <laughs> is the greatest combination this... for um, a wider audience. No. Disagree. This is the Fast and Furious we want to see, where it just rises every bit, every What's act is better one, than the next though? one. What's the next one? Hey, well, that's the thing. Give me a bit of time. I'll figure it out. <laughs> 
I don't know if we need that time. Oh. I also don't know if I have access to the kind of drugs that I would need to really <laughs> properly appreciate your movie, Andy. The biggest thing I have with Andy is that it's just not a sequel to the ninth film. It's just a standalone movie. I feel like you're just you're just diverting from a franchise. Yeah, no, it's it, yours is so much of a sequel. It's boring. I got lost you on yours. I don't, it was a, with the data. The data got was there. It was gone. I don't care. Where's Cthulhu? Like, come on. That was just a natural follow-on from the movie with added jeopardy for them all. And no, Ross is it, a great it, it, follow-on it, it, from his movies, albeit not the movie we watched. <laughs> hey, I, am, I I used it as a. I I introduced the Rossi U. I'm dead impressed on how the how you pulled it back from Ross in space <laughs> to follow on from the film we just watched. To your yeah, credit, that was good. but well, it was I've... still not the actual like from a production value standpoint. Mine is the most productive, <laughs> sensical sequel, is what I will say. Your yeah, no, yours just doesn't have the fast in, in and world, furious. Like, in a world of go left, I it's go straight on. Okay. Boring. I'm no, just it's carrying too much the story going on. on. It's too ground. It's too grounded and boring. Yours has actually got like a. It's a, a, almost like, a normal... like mine's the one the producers would go for. <laughs> yours is the one. If you want to bury a franchise, introduce Lovecraft. All right, introduce Every Lovecraft time. to a family franchise and see what happens yeah. here. Because mine's got a funny enough, Lovecraft doesn't have anything to do with family. It's all about hell yeah. and murder and death, and you break your but family mine... up. And don't give him a chance my to family, recompense. Family. My film is about family. It's about bringing the family back together, and that's what the whole of this franchise is about. They have a they have a dick son, but then they Let's bring him back. Let's one specific bit of your pitch that really got me <laughs> questioning things. Not only does Brian write a letter to his family that is never seen because it's literally the next time that anything <laughs> is noted about their son, he appears in a hood. Then... <laughs> You, you, can, say, you can see the dramatic shot of him putting the, the the piece of paper on the coat. That's all you want to see. We don't care if it ties together. We have a dramatic shot of him going, I am never returning. That ain't my biggest like, problem oh, with the scene after that follows is the fact that he says this leader he'd never met, only saw him by the fireball, was more of a yeah. dad than his dad. That Sorry, Al Pacino. Yeah. Him. Al, Al Pacino. That's, that's not... That was to highlight just kind of like how a, how much of a dick kind of Brian is that he's literally going he's he's willing to like actually shove aside his father and just say this guy I barely know is more than a father. If you want he's Brian that much of a dick, I don't want him to survive your film. He needs to be <laughs> burned in yeah, hell because he he's a scrum. He he's a little scrotum. Back. He's a scrotum. Exactly. Yeah. He's a scrotum at the start, but then he's a um, a, 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 oh, a good guy at the end. Okay, so he has a big redemption arc. That's what I he was. Does, I yeah. must have missed that he, in the pitch. That's why he kills Al Pacino. <laughs> <laughs> that's his redemption arc. Then he, him and Letty bring back the uh, bring back the uh, car dom. I mean, I, I so dom. wanted to roast you for car dom. Then we got Robot Brian. <laughs> so I can't say yeah, anything Robot about car dom now because no, Robot yeah. Brian's also a thing. <laughs> Yeah, Brian have Brian's voice. Yeah, no, well, it's like a, it's uh, an augment. You're resurrecting it's... Paul Walker to kill him and replace him with <laughs> to a kill robot. Him again, and then no, he's not dead in the Fast and Furious. Look, they brought they brought his fucking wife in and then didn't go. Oh yeah, well, he... his wife's alive. Yes, but the actor no, and the character. Yes, but the character would have followed his wife with. So I was like, all right, let me put him well, in. I solved that by killing her because she shouldn't have been in the last film. So I decided to <laughs> yeah, kill her off early I in I put Bob Walker in as a voice, yeah? And you can just augment his voice. So it doesn't even have to be. It could be an impersonator because then you could be like... Yeah. So the robot doesn't actually look like him. No, then. it's like it. It looks like a fridge. So you don't have. You don't need Brian like then. Fridge. I just have a different I just have a robot. Why don't you put the robot in Dom or something? No, because... Because yeah, I wanted well, to, I want to get you know Brian. You I want to get in Brian in there, and I want to get this cool Megatron moment where he, you know. I mean, I, I, I love the Power Rangers Turbo yeah. moment where you make a Megazord out of five cars. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. well up Amazing. for seeing Power Rangers Turbo meets Fast and Furious. Oh, sequel, sequel pitch next week. Winner picks Power Rangers. <laughs> um, oh my god! I've got, oh, I've got two legit fantastic. questions for us. To be fair, why does Brixton kill Brian? Because he is it because he's told by. By Cypher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to kill. Cypher never. Cypher wasn't in the franchise when Brian was in the franchise. Ah, it doesn't matter. He? he knows. He knows. <laughs> it's a way to get. It's a way to get Dom. So well, no, it's a way to get Dom pissed off. Yeah. But isn't isn't uh, Jacob supposed to be lying low at the end of Fast Nine? Who? Jacob Cena. Ah no, no. We don't he, know. And then he, he could be him in the blue being, car. 
Hearing it being John Cena and going on live TV every yeah. week might not help no, him, like, keep it But like, now he's John safe. Cena. He's changed his name to John Cena. Yeah, but he still looks like John Cena, as in the actor John Cena, as in Jacob. I mean, yeah, I like it. Still... If you're going to smash through the fourth wall, you might as well do it and get a shitload of money from WWE. Yeah, exactly. Brand... It, doesn't like... Even, like, it doesn't even, like, the, the bad guys don't even see him on TV by watching wrestling going, hey, that's fucking Jacob. Let's go there. He's just on TV. Did yeah. you watch the pitch black match with Monster? Yeah. WWE are going to cash in on this too, having a big yeah, see, WrestleMania um, moment for it. It's tied into the story. Why it makes am I no defending sense. Ross? It's a terrible idea. It's, it's a, it does make sense. Idea. It does make sense. <laughs> no, I think, I think I'm going to call it there. I have tried to be a little more scientific with how, I've, how I'm working out who's going to win because I did suspect that we would have the conundrum of you know, are you picking your favorite pitch or the one that follows on best and you have to. And so I was like, right, OK, I'm going to I'm still going with my gut, but I've tallied it a bit more. So every time one of you said something in your pitch that I was like, oh, yeah, that's good. Whether it was because it was funny or because it was a good story point, I've given you a plus. And if there was something that I didn't like or like just gut feeling or if something that a nice plot hole or whatever else, giving it a minus. Likewise, in the discussion phase, any time any of you made a good point and it made me go, oh, yeah, shit, that didn't make sense. Then I would give the person a minus. Or if you fought, fought well and made something make more sense, I've given you a plus. So this is how it's shaken out. <laughs> in third place this week, we have Andy. Bullshit. Cthulhu, rise up and take them! <laughs> Look, Al Pacino being rugby tackled by Vin Diesel is a visual that I will never that will never leave me. I love it. <laughs> Al Pacino <laughs> entering the franchise, full stop. Fucking amazing. That would, would be work. fantastic. He would work. And as as much as there is all the discussion of immortality and actually bringing in magic, or on Ross's a multiverse into this series actually you could kind of be like oh well they did say they were immortal maybe they're actually oh the fuck there is magic <laughs> it just wasn't quite there and like why is brian the chosen one why is brian so upset about being it it just it your your pluses and minuses you you still had more pluses than minuses but they were quite evenly matched was it like two to one or something <laughs> two pluses no 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 no. It, no 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 you <laughs> Didn't like you anything. ended up with six pluses, but there were five minuses. Ah, that's <laughs> probably that's a lot like my old school test. <laughs> yeah. Okay, before Ooh. I reveal who wins, I'm going to go through what I liked and didn't like about the other two. Matthew, you you got Corona product placement in there. I appreciated that you made that point. <laughs> I enjoyed that you brought back the guy from um, uh, DK, yeah. the the Drift King from Tokyo Drift. I enjoyed that. I liked the globe trotting. I liked the Harrier, the 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 heli carrier ending. Although heli giant vehicle on ice with cars driving around underneath it is very similar to the submarine thing. It's just in the opposite direction, and we've seen that before. So that was that was a minus there. Other minuses: Why is Jacob not on the run? Why has he just come back and everything's fine? And how on earth, after all of this feuding, would I, as a producer, get The Rock to agree to show back up in this movie? That is an issue with Ross's as well. Ross, you got. You got a few pluses for I, I gave you a plus for being bold enough to do it to start with a sequel to your act to your pitch from last time. I gave you like three more when it was a dream sequence, and then you got a few more at the end when you then tied it together. However, in terms of things kind of making sense, there were minuses adding on as well, as well as Jacob being John Cena got pluses, but because of the argument that Andy made that he that's that's the face of Jacob Toretto and he needs to be in hiding, there were minuses too. So it shook out thusly. You both got eight pluses. Ooh. Oh, nice. Nice. Ooh. However, one of you is Matthew. Got, Just tell us. One of you got six minuses and one of you got four minuses. The one with four minuses was Matt. So Matt 
is this week's winner. Oh, thank you very much. And I genuinely had, <laughs> as soon as I was like, I'm not going to read them this week. I want to be surprised by Ross's, but I'm not going to read Andy's <laughs> too that way. Yeah. And then when Andy went to Cthulhu, I was like, what the fuck am I up against this week? <laughs> so it's been special to pitch against those two pitches. I'm not going to forget them anytime soon. And no. the the answer you could definitely go beyond this. I I would have voted Ross's myself, but I will absolutely take the win because <laughs> um, <laughs> I want the franchises to buy into us. But amazing! Thank you very much, Matt. What do we all need to watch and pitch for you? So next episode, we are let's stick with the franchise a little bit more. <laughs> but we're going to go animation this time around. We are Ooh. going to prepare ourselves for the sequel, Spider-Man Spider-Verse. Uh, we're going to watch and pitch the first into the Spider-Verse. Oh. Holy moly. You could use Sony, you could use Marvel, you could use... DC, don't give a shit, really. Uh, <laughs> do whatever you want. But yeah, we're, we're, going, we're swinging into action once more. Another it's multiverse. Cool. The multiverse yeah. is continue. <laughs> yeah. Dom, the Council but of Doms. If, Dom comes, if Council of Dom appears, sorry, boys, you've lost. Simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that pretty much does it for us. We would very quickly like to say a big thank you to all of our pitch pals on Patreon. If you fancy hearing more of what we have to say about these movies in the review section, and if you fancy chipping us a couple of quid a month to keep the lights on and pay for microphones and and, and hosting and all of those kinds of things, head to patreon.com forward slash sequel pitch and drop us a couple of quid if you fancy it if you don't that's totally fine we're going to be here anyway you can reach out to us on twitter on instagram you can find us on facebook that would be nice we don't really hear from people on there so find us on facebook there's your biggest call to action this week and i think with that it's time to say goodbye so it is goodbye from honorable runner-up number one andy henry did we talk about the scene of tracking gun if we didn't, we missed an opportunity. Uh, it is goodbye from honourable runner-up number two, Ross Harmston. Goodbye. It is goodbye from this week's winner and next week's host, Matthew Rushton. Goodbye, family. <laughs> and it is goodbye from me and the whole sequel pitch family. I'm off to open a corona. Cheers, Cheers. and goodbye. Family.